what is up YouTube it is super chase and today I am bringing you guys a video of what am I buying Pokemon TCG May 2024 edition I got a lot of good cards to talk about I've been in this hobby for a fucking fat minute been collecting my entire life and it's very easy to kind of pattern recognize after a while and to see certain trends play out throughout the years and the point that brings me into is Crown Zenith, and I, I, some might say this is a played out set or that it's been talked into oblivion because, you know, it's been out for a decent bit now, and it's run its life, and it's probably at its end of the print. I don't know the print runs or cycles that are on these cards currently, but considering that they're from Sword and Shield and we're, like, in the middle of Scarlet Violet era right now makes me believe that this is probably pretty well into the rearview mirror not only with the collector side and the fan base but even with the pokemon company itself to you know stop printing the set because what i've heard is that i'm pretty sure crown zenith was saw a pretty significant you know print run when it was out there but this is the thing guys this set the art is just too good it's too good and i'm not some amateur first time collector you can go check out my other videos this set is ridiculous. It's like actually insane. I remember when it was coming out, I was texting my friends about the set. I was like, this could be like the best set ever. And uh, the art is just, it's ever like these gold cards, people are going to be co collecting these, these Leafeons and Glaceons specifically. If you guys want to look at some easy money, it's these four right here and the dogs. This, these, if you're picking them up at, what are they selling at these days? 17 bucks, 16 bucks. You know, if you could pick one up for that price for a low 16, a good mint copy, well-centered, that is such a good vehicle to park your money in because there's a common phenomenon. If you want to see themes, if you want to make really easy, safe plays and make some money in the game, you just follow like the Pokemon Bible, which is if it's Gen 1, it works. If it's Eevee, it works. And there's a few legendaries in there, Latios, Latios, and the legendary trios. Typically, the, the earlier it was in the franchise, the higher likelihood it is to be one of these lucrative Pokemon that can sell entire sets. Anyways, I'm not trying to ramble on too much about Crown Zenith. I could talk about this set all day. It's an incredible set. Even the Sarah Aura VMAX, it's, it's a heavy hitter through and through. There's no weak card in the set. That Leafeon is gorgeous. This Raikou is gorgeous. This Suicune. I mean, guys, these are some of the prettiest cards we've ever gotten in Pokemon, ever. Like, straight up. So, Zara or VMAX, this might be one of my favorite cards, if not my favorite card in the set. Criminally undervalued card. It's going to be really fun to see in five to ten years when all of this is, you know, far in the rearview mirror. We're, 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 we're considering this almost vintage, like, like pseudo-vintage. I just think this set is going to age very, very nicely. People are going to find these arts. New fans, old fans, people are all going to want these. So unless you have your entire PSA 10 Crown Zenith Galarian Gallery blinged out, or you have your multiple binders worth, or you're sitting on a ton uh, of this product sealed or opened, it's a good set to be in on. I, I really do think so. And it's kind of everything that's working in the game is in this set. Anyways, I don't want to talk about it too much. Crown Zenith, it's a hit set very safe investment. I'm going to touch on Lost Origin for just a brief moment here. Giratina V alternate art. I mean, look at 17 listings. That kind of speaks for itself, doesn't it? I don't own this card. I probably should. I, I kind of want it. I'm only saying kind of is because there's a million cards. This card though is crazy and it's hard to pull and it's in a great set. The other card I want to talk about is Aerodactyl V. So Gen 1 Pokemon, I'm not even a Gen 1 person. I'm 21. I came up with like the Emerald and Diamond games. Those are kind of like my Gen 1. But I mean, it's it's Gen 1 just does its thing. And honestly, it's good for the hobby. And if you have any Gen 1, pretty much anything of the TCG, and it's rare, and it's in good condition from almost any era, uh, it, it basically has value. So this Aerodactyl V, it's, it's gorgeous. It is really gorgeous. I was looking at a really good copy the other day in a card shop. It wasn't perfect. I hunt to get stuff graded and get stuff 10. It was probably a nine, uh, but I didn't want to play full price for a nine. If I'm going to buy this card, wow, oh my god, there's no way. Are these really selling for 150 each? Holy shit, this card is like blowing up like right now. Okay, well, it sucks because I was going to make this video a week ago and how it would have looked like a profit, but yeah, I don't see this card slowing down at all. And this is like the good mix here is you see you have that Aerodactyl, you have this Giratina, so you have two very definitive chase cards in the set you kind of have chase card one and then you have chase card two 
these Rotom V alt art here. I like Rotom a lot. One of my favorite Pokemon coming out of uh, Gen 4. And uh, you also have this Galarian Berserker. Now, I don't think either of these are particularly like, oh my god, game breaking, collection warping cards. I actually do like this Rotom a lot. And you know, I don't mind the Berserker too. Uh, I just don't have too much connection to that Pokemon. But these are good opportunities where you can look at cards that are, you know, the $15 alternate art in a in a lucrative set and invest in these. Because I've been there where I had much less money in this game. And you, you, you can't buy the PSA 10, you know, Giratina alt art from Lost Origin. You need to, you know, some more penny stock options. I'm not calling $15 a penny stock, but this is a card that it's like this. And there's a couple alt arts from like Evolving Skies. You basically pick a great set and then pick like some of the most undervalued ones, maybe the less popular Pokemon. And they're obviously much cheaper but it gives you an opportunity to buy in, to almost own equity into that set. Anyways, moving on. Lost Origin, great set. Brilliant Stars. Brilliant Stars is another great one, and I know I'm just kind of mowing through the stuff, but this is kind of what I think of these sets. Disregard everything, just think of the Trainer Gallery. Trainer Gallery is solid. I'm not going to talk too much on this set. I don't think of it insanely. I think this set is strong because you want to know why it has that Charizard card, and then it has Ultra Ball, and that's another thing. People, competitive viability is a massive, massive deal, and that very often affects the price of a lot of cards. So if you're not tapped into the competitive side of it too, and you don't know what the cards do, you're missing out on a large understanding of the Pokemon market like as a whole. Uh, and I think most of you guys are tapped into that, especially if you're watching something like this. But if you're newer here, you definitely, it's fun to just collect and you could just collect, but it's also, it's even more fun to know that you could buy certain cards that you could just read them and they haven't even come out yet. You're like, wait, this card is really good. And I love it, the art's beautiful you might get it on like very very undervalued when the set releases and then people finally catch along like the nest ball here this is not a ten dollar card it's not because it's really like a 17 8 18 dollar card i got mine for nine to ten dollars each i think i paid like yeah eight nine ten dollars for my play sets of gold nest balls this is a card that is a mandatory four of in almost every single deck in the pokemon game and yes not every deck but it, most every deck plays nest ball it's just whether you play it at one two three or four a lot of decks play it at four and it's, yeah, this card is gonna be a power player in the set for a while. If you wanna get a trainer card, buy a fucking Nest Ball. Also, Arvin is a crazy broken card. Buy an Arvin, buy a rare candy. A play set of rare candies, this is the thing, is rare candy is probably to the end of this game's existence going to be a card that is gonna come in and out of format consistently. There's Maybe there's times where it's not in format, but I think a lot of the times it will be in format. So these cards, same with Nest Ball, which has already been in format, Sun and Moon era, these cards can come back. See, I wouldn't bet as much on Arvin because it's just not as much of a generic card, but Arvin's going to be good for the next two full years, okay? The next two rotation blocks. So you got to keep that in mind. It's a great art too. I own this card. Really cool card. Great card in standard. Boss's Orders. Same kind of idea. Wow, these are climbing too. 15 bucks. I got mine way cheaper. I got mine 9, 10 bucks right when Paldea Evolved came out. Paldea Evolved is a total dark horse set, by the way. It, uh, it, it's very powerful, kind of in a unique way that is not, it's not, I feel like, structured like most main series sets, and I'll show you why, but Boss's Orders, I love Getsis, he's such a fucking badass, I love Gen 5, but he just, the character design in Gen 5 is like on a different level, the sprites, everything, I mean, like, I feel like we collectively have to agree as a Pokemon community, like, Gen 5, like, when you pick up and play Black and White, the art style and the pixels in, in every... It's just perfect. It's like that cinema medium. It's like pure fucking cinema. It really is. And gets this. This just encapsulates that fucking swag. So this is also a card that is very likely to come in and out of formats throughout the, the next years. It's good for the next two years. So if you literally you could park your money in this card and, and wait some time. This is the thing is I don't see boss's order as some like park your money card, even though I do think it will go up in value. You see 68 listings. I actually like playing Pokemon and collecting the cards and like, like I just want to own four of this card so I can play in my deck and so I own it. But uh, I do think it's it's a beautiful card. And there's some people that think that trainer cards as a whole are like gonna disappear. Like there's been like some waifu craze that people are gonna wake up one day and be like, you know what, wait, I hate these cards. Let's, you know, I don't wanna collect these anymore. That's never gonna happen. And it's actually gonna be the opposite. And the trainer cards are gonna get more and more popular and people are gonna actually wanna collect. I mean, look at the game, guys, right? It's a it's an art it's an art game now. Like I mean the, the collectability side, it's it's a it's modern art. And we're gonna have a lot of different spending habits with like Gen Z and Gen Alpha, which is even younger, and then the people older than us too, like millennials, like we are into different stuff. And this is like our version of art, like a Charizard base set PSA ten or you know, a very rare sought after Pokemon card, like 
that might be our version of ah, very high luxury art. You know, we're going to see like where, you know, kind of societal trends end up going, but trainer cards are not going anywhere. And anybody that says otherwise just kind of sounds like they're coping, honestly, uh, or they like missed the ship. I've been collecting trainer cards from the jump. I have a crazy trainer collection. I even have the first trainer ever, which if you don't know what the first trainer full art is ever, it's N from black and white, actually. It's just the N full art. Uh, I have this in black and white. Um, oh, it's it's such a cool card. And this was the this was back when they were first trying out full arts. But yeah, and this card is so cool. First ever trainer full art we ever got in a set. Noble Victories. I think they released that Victini too. Oh, I love the Victini. This is such a cool card. Black and White was actually in their fucking bag. I think it was the first time their studio was going at it. And they were, dude, they were delivering Pete, guys. I fucking love the Black and White Era cards. You can't tell me otherwise. This Meowth too. I actually endorsed this card in a previous video. It's, uh, because it, it's the Pikachu came from the first set and then they made the Meowth in the second set. These are really cool cards, guys. Some people don't know about them. I think over time, like, if you could pick this card up, lightly played, for $24, like, this card is over a decade old, and it's rare, and it's a very iconic Pokemon. I mean, there, see, I would much rather buy something like this than, like, a fucking rainbow art from one of the latest sets or some shit, like, it, it, or from, you know, Sword and Shield Air. Like, some people just move their money into very weird positions where it's like that is like the worst you could probably spend your 22 dollars on you could actually find something very rare like a cool collection piece that could really see a crazy jump when almost people you gotta be ahead of the curve right you gotta find it before everybody else kind of finds it but same thing with this chant chant pal i bought this at the absolute lowest price it's like at six months yeah i bought these for i bought these i think i bought my place up for 16 17 bucks so i actually got it for lower than it even says on tcg player it was hunted on ebay too for the best most gem mint copies because guys, if you, again, it, it brings me back to my point earlier in the video is like, if you know competitively, like what these cards do, like when you read this card, it's just broken, like shivery chill, being able to grab, it's literally a resource grab to at water energy per turn. And then with Baxcalibur, obviously the combo hail blade, it's like poetry in motion. And like, it does so much fucking damage in like, <laughs> it's probably like if a Charizard didn't exist, it's probably the best deck in Pokemon, like by a good shot. Like I think Chien Pao is actually the best deck in Pokemon right now, and I, I personally I would play it over Charizard, but some people would say Charizard, but I, Chien Pao, if you have the right list, it almost feels unbeatable. The point it's bringing me to is, if this was any other fucking Pokemon from a previous gen or any other legendary, it would be a $150 card, okay? Chien Pao and whatever this, I forget what they're called, like the Disaster 4 and Chilu in... Uh, I don't even know, I don't, Tinglu, I forget all of their names, but Chin Pao is definitely the coolest, it's the one I like the most, even if this card didn't exist, I just think it looks the coolest, but this card is crazy, it's crazy good, but those Pokemon are brand new, people don't have the connection to them yet, which is why Pokemon is so brilliant, and why people shouldn't get mad at Pokemon Company for doing this, I see a lot of YouTubers being like, oh, we wanted new Pokemon, we wanted, you know, not just Gen 1, but now it's like too much, it's like, everything's about Paldea, everything, you know, they, they used it for two names in a set, it's the, all the Pokemon, no, 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 guys, that's amazing, and we should be celebrating that, because A, we don't want it just recycled with the same fucking Pokemon, I'm glad the next set, I'm glad that our next set, Twilight Masquerade, is Ogre Pond, and all these other, Blood Moon, uh, Ursa Luna, and not, oh, it's the 100th Charizard alternate art or something, it's healthy for the game to show new Pokemon and get people interested in a wide variety of Pokemon in the hobby. It gets people more interested. It deepens the investment in the hobby. It, it basically just only is positive things. And because Paldea evolved, look at the set, they made a ton of these like brand new Pokemon, brand new legendaries. They made some of the most gorgeous arts for them I've ever seen. And this Tinkaton too, I've seen this in person. This is a card in that Skeledurge too. I love that card. But Tinkaton is a card that like in person, this card is Oh, stunning it's stunning it's really great like th these are like really this card too again i own my place at it's absolutely stunning chi yu stunning card i mean i don't own this one personally but i want to own it i mean it's it's absolutely beautiful even the squawkabilly very playable card this is like competitive 101 if you knew your shit when the set came out and when all these were at their lows which some of these cards are at their lows right now wo chien five bucks it might be a good time to look into this set guys that's why it's on this video. This Grusha full art, is this what we were talking about earlier? This is unbelievable. I'm actually going to go in on this full art. Uh, I think I at least need to own one of these. It's stunning. Starly's there. This is one that just hasn't gotten its flowers yet. And guys, if I had to give one 
observation I've made over the last few years collecting Pokemon all throughout my middle school, all throughout high school, I was trying any angle to get some money to spend on Pokemon. I've been collecting through every era. And the reason I stress that is I've been playing this for so long. And this is the first time in collecting. And this is the first time where I've seen the community kind of be overwhelmingly negative about a certain era. When in reality, like Sword and Shield for me, I remember early Sword and Shield era. Man, I know it was popular, but some of those sets were hurt. Like, some of those sets sucked. Like, Darkness of Blaze and some of those earlier sets. I mean, even Vivid Voltage. Like, you know, the Pikachu. Like, those sets to current day sets to Scarlet and Violet are, like, trash. Straight up. They're, like, trash. And I remember I opened Vivid Voltage with a ton of my friends the weekend it came out. I have super great memories of the set, but, like, I'm just being honest about it. Look at all these amazing arts. It's ridiculous. And then it has the magic carpet to prop up the whole set and the Iono, double Iono, and it's got Raichu, and it's got Tyranitar. This is a huge sleeper set. Scarlet and Violet is going to get their flowers eventually because for some reason, a lot of the community has turned on this set, uh, on this entire era. You want to know why here? Let me just like spoil it. It's basically because it's not as... There was an era during Sword and Shield where it was booming and people were able to take advantage of other people. People were coming into the hobby. They didn't know anything. Long story short, people made a lot of money exploiting people and charging too much and marking up everything. And now it's returned to a state of a very healthy game where players eat, you know, vendors eat. Like, everybody is kind of doing well. Anybody who really loves Pokemon is enjoying the game right now, but the people who aren't able to exploit as hard don't like the scarlet and violet era because you know if if that's your value system the old the old ways are like you know the heyday and then now is like the great depression because it's fair and it's good now and boxes are back to a relatively fair price 113 though this could keep climbing who knows but anyways paldea evolved i am hitting every topic today guys if you guys enjoy this if you guys enjoy this discussion hit that like button comment down below let me know what you guys think let me know if you think I'm crazy. If you think I'm fucking batshit crazy, let me know in the comment section. I would love to just chop it up. But I'm giving you guys my full, unadulterated opinion. And yeah, I hope you guys are appreciating my uh, contribution in this because I, I feel like I got some knowledge and I want to share it to you guys. And I'm not here to sell you absolutely anything. I'm just here to talk Pokemon. I love this hobby. And uh, let's continue. Paldean Fates. Uh, I was looking at this set and... There's a Dark Horse card that I do want to look at, and it's the Arvin alternate art. It's because Arvin is very playable. This card is, its you can see, it's kind of starting to rise again to $14. It's, they're, they're moving a lot, too. I mean, look, at today is the 2nd of May, and there's already been quite a few that have sold, and it's very consistent, and it's a cool art, too, but it's you got to take into account the competitive viability of this card, and then everything makes sense. Again, it's a two to four of in most decks in this format right now. And it's a cool, really cool art with this cool Pokeball gimmick that they've never done before in any set that is exclusive to Paldea and Fates until we see something else like it. And this crazy blue thing too. If they, if like history just keeps going and like nobody ever makes shit like this ever again, that's going to be like a cool appeal to the set that like they have these very unique arts that they are like these turquoise or gold foilings that could be an interesting investment too. I would definitely not move into that yet. I'm not the biggest fan of these. It's not that I don't like them. I think they're honestly cool. I'm glad they exist, but they're not cards I'm hunting. They're not cards I particularly, they're not like big chase cards for me. They're not cards I want to get like graded in particular. Uh, if I got found some cool copies, they look like they're hard to grade, honestly, when I look at them. Um, cards with all this technology on them like that, they, they tend to be harder to grade. Uh, and then uh, moving into Paradox Rift. So Paradox Rift, again, we're just touching on basically all the, the modern sets, but I just want to give you guys my full opinion on all these things and, and put it out there so I can at least have a record of it. So when, you know, months to, to come, if I if I'm keep making these videos, I can kind of hold myself accountable and or just show me like, hey, I was fucking right. Iron Hands EX. This is one of the easiest buys in modern Pokemon right now. Don't buy the Double Rare. This is the one that's going to get reprinted and go tank into the ground. I'm so glad I have this opinion out on the internet now because don't spend 15 bucks. Just somehow double it, you know, and, and get the alternate art and get freaking a couple of them because this card is going to be competitive viable for two years. It's broken. It's super cool. The Future Box deck is only going to get more figured out and better over time. It's a very fun deck, too. And yeah, there's just a really big demand for this card and eventually the demand is going to overwhelm the supply because these alternate arts are not easy to pull and the good copies are not easy to get and those are going to get hoarded up 
And when that seeps out, when that tap goes dry, same with this Groudon too. Same with this Garchomp, honestly. This Garchomp, some people hate this art. I've seen so much negative stuff about this art. I think this art's cool. I think this art's cool. They call me crazy. I really like that Garchomp art. I don't own the card yet. I get, it's it's unique, but I love all the blues. I'm a big sucker for blue, so maybe that's what it is. This Gold Dango, see, some people went crazy over this art. This art's cool. I like it, but it's not my favorite. So I saw some really positive reaction. Iron Valiant, this, okay, this was like a $60 card a second ago. What was it like? Yeah, this was like, yeah, $60, $68 cards. Wow, you got burned if you bought it that price. You never can buy these expensive alt arts right out of the gate. That's never a smart idea. Uh, if you're brand new here, don't do that, guys. Wait, it, like same thing with friggin. There's very, very few exceptions. Again, the only time that ever applies is if it's really competitive and you think people are gonna overlook it at first and then come back to it. it again, there's very niche situations where you should buy it straight off uh, set release, but for the most part, if it's not absolutely broken, if it's not game changing, just wait a couple weeks. Typically, the price chills out. 28 bucks is a great, price for this card this card is crazy 68 was highway it was was robbery was highway robbery this though 25 bucks is very fair that's a great art that's gonna appreciate nicely over time same with the iron hands it's gonna be used a lot too iron hands that's a really cool card as a psa head myself that is a really cool card to get graded in a psa 10 because it's hard to get it's gonna be iconic by this whole series this whole format of this next two years, that's gonna be an iconic card. It's gonna be like a Luxray level X of this era, and they're gonna all gonna be played. So if you get them, because it's a, such a competitive card, people are gonna play them, people are gonna use them, and they're gonna get damaged. So to get that in a 10, see, that's an interesting play. You can start making psychological analysis like that and uh, in game analysis and start making some really smart investments. See, so you shouldn't just look at Pokemon and be like, oh, I'm just gonna like buy a blister and like keep it in my closet. No, you should like see like, wait, I could like buy something that I fucking love, an art piece that I have forever that is only gonna go up every single day. Again, that's that's a little optimistic, but it, over a long period of time, the odds of it going up like any of these cards is very high. Temporal Forces, I think is a banger set. Anybody that says otherwise does not understand Pokemon. It's very strong and it has a lot of iconic Pokemon. I think these Pokemon too from, uh, from Gen 5 are only gonna get more popular over time. These Iron Crown, this is a stunning card, again, insanely competitive a four of in any future deck so with that being said the demand is crazy look at this 10 were picked up for 75 dollars guys if that isn't a sign and you can see they're just climbing they're climbing and by the end of this first page they're 75 bucks they're 75 bucks and in the fifth page they're 150 bucks so it only takes a couple more to, you know, really send a card to the moon. And what if you bought them all for 50 bucks? You know, what if you got on on it at the best time? You know, you, you picked yours up for 65 each and they go all good. And then the next thing you know, it's a $150 card. This this is one of those cards that could legitimately be uh, over $100 and for good reason and have a, a long time climbing because of its competitive viability. Same with this card too. It's gold copy. Any cards of Iron Crown, even the normal EX, which I think is like two or three bucks now, that's a good buy as well. This is just the normal screen page to look at any more stuff. And I was gonna show some sealed product, just why not? We talked a lot about singles. Why not show some sealed? Some people, that's their main investment. I like both. I have a pretty sizable sealed collection and I even collect sealed games and used games of the Pokemon series. And then obviously I collect a ton of singles and a ton of cards, but I love sealed investments. It's definitely the safest investment you could possibly make inside the entire hobby because if you look at sealed prices long term, I mean, it's it's generally a pretty linear, just straight line up. Yeah, looking at these things is Japanese boxes right now because of the yen is so weak. There's a couple variables involved, but it's it's there's really good prices. And if you feel compelled to invest, if you like Pokemon and you want to move your money into something like this, for example, and you might even be able to get a better price than this, 43 bucks for a Pokemon Shiny Treasure EX. This box alone, this is why Japan boxes are so much better than English boxes is because they are like display pieces. This is like a work of art in itself. This front is beautiful. This is like an icon, it just looks badass. The Pokemon booster boxes, for example, like English Pokemon, booster like these are, they're just not they don't look as cool like and this is how they look open but yeah clothes like look at a oh look at that box of rebel clash you might have to like frame that and put that in your living room no it looks horrible but the japanese boxes look really cool okay horrible's a little a little much they don't look horrible but the japanese ones from the exterior they're like they're designed that way the english it looks like it's like you know a manufactured thing like meant to be opened up and displayed but meant to be opened this looks cool you know sealed like this looks really cool like i have these and 
yeah, trust me, they look cool. V-Star Universe, basically Crown Zenith in Japan. It's not basically, it is Crown Zenith in Japan, and it has so much cool arts, and it's a great set. And for 78 bucks, it's still pretty cheap, guys. Like, again, it's been pretty lenient. Because the hobby is, has chilled out, things like, if this was two years ago, oh, this price would just be gouged. But now, things are fair, and, and, and it's a buyer's market, honestly. It's a buyer's market. So, if you have some extra cash and you want to move it into Pokemon, I think it's a good idea. Again, I don't know if this is a good price. I haven't looked into 151. This looks like a good price. What the fuck? 87 bucks. Well, that that that's objectively a lot better. Uh, seven available left. Hey, guys, go grab one. That's a pretty good price, guys. 151, again, I'm not the biggest 151 fan, like as in Kanzo, but I would be an idiot to not recognize that there is a ironclad fan base around 151, and they have a lot of money, and... Yeah, Kanto is just it just always performs in Pokemon. So again, if you want a safe route, if you pick Kanto, you almost can't lose, or it's just very safe. Like picking this, for example, is a much more a much bigger die roll. But honestly, I would be interested to see over like ten years picking up two boxes of these and a couple booster packs, and then a box of one fifty one. But yeah, I would probably still pick one fifty one just because Charizard, Blastoise, Venusaur. It's just got the that that fan base and it plugged in this right here pokemon tag all stars thing you have to understand about this set is that a lot of these cards never came to english okay and you really have to take that in and think about that in one of the most iconic periods ever in pokemon this was before the boom this was way not way before the boom but because it, it was a set that was getting kind of toyed with in the boom as well too and i'm referring to the boom as like logan paul blowing pokemon up and going crazy on youtube massive resurgence but this set is crazy it's kind of like v star universe as well it's kind of like the second version of that except it came out a bit prior and the arts are just ridiculous like this too i own multiple of these or you've seen my graded videos too this card is epic and cards like this these are the cards that are going to be the next power players of this gen just mark my words these also never came to english too these are iconic. These are sick. It's not even that they're iconic, because maybe to some people they're not. They're just going to be rare, and they're super badass, and they have very iconic Pokemon on them. And we see what's happening in Temporal Forces just with a trainer having a Gengar. It's already like a, you know, a 70, 80 R card. I mean, look at these guys, and the print quality is insane. The, the, the foils. These cards are the shit. I'm not even kidding you. Lastly... The only reason I put this in here is because I love the set so much, and the PSA 10 prices are actually, like, criminally low. Like, again, guys, it's a buyer's market if you want to get in. I mean, this, I genuinely think we will look back at this in five to ten years, this exact listing, and I'll be like, what the actual fuck? And I, there's going to be a decent amount out there. I understand that, but $34, I mean, that's that's almost like just the price of the card and it getting graded. It just and it's a 10, like, you know what I mean? Like, there's almost no premium on it being a 10. It's just the price of the card and it getting graded. So, yeah, these cards are really cool. And just look at that art. It's brilliant. It's it's genuinely, it's genuinely brilliant. So, I think if you stay true to stuff you like and don't view Pokemon as an investment, which is kind of like me, at this point, I own so much of it, I do kind of subsequently look at it as an investment, but... I only collect them because I like them and I love them and I want to own them. And I think if you buy card, like this card too, I own, I don't own it in a 10 yet. I'm going to submit a ton of them, but I, I love this card and like I want to own it. And it doesn't matter if it goes to zero dollars. That would obviously suck, but I still love the card and I'm glad I own it. I bought it and I thought it was worth the price and I paid the money with a smile on my face. And there's a, there's a likelihood it can go up in value and go a lot higher. Um, but yeah, a 10, uh, a $42 10. A Suicune, this this is crazy. Like these are really good deals, guys. Uh, from a long-term Pokemon fan, these there's, there's not a whole lot of premium on these. I mean, there, there's a whole lot of premium going on with the card. Okay, what the fuck is this? Ty, never buy a Ty when he's card, guys. That's a great, <laughs> it's a great way to end this video. If you're gonna buy Pokemon too, only buy English or Japanese. That's it. Never buy absolutely anything else. And there's a lot of reasons why that's the case, but it's the reason, like, look at Korean boxes. I think Korean boxes are fun to just open straight up product because they're obviously much cheaper, but, you know, to invest in, I, I, I wouldn't personally. I really wouldn't. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like. Comment in the comment section down below. I would love to know what you guys think of these type of videos because I uh, I think these are fun, and I want to do it just because I wanted to talk Pokemon, and if you guys like them, I will happily do some more. There's a ton of different eras I can touch upon. Platinum era, I can touch upon. Black and white, I can touch upon. Heart, gold, soul, silver. I was 
participating and spending in all those areas. I love talking about them. I think that wraps up the video. So I've been Super Chase and I'm signing out. Peace.